Greetings and welcome to another edition of The Great Goddess. Praise be to Goddess. Praise be to Goddess. Well, here it is another Wednesday, and today we have for you the topic A God can neither confirm nor deny. And neither can you. Now, what does this mean? Why is this important? Uh, how how is it that a God can neither confirm nor deny? And why is it important to us? Well, a lot of uh, religions, uh, namely Christianity and uh, other other branches of Christianity claim absolute supremacy for their God, okay? And they say that their God is super powered and can do anything. And they assume, they just assume that everyone's going to believe in their God, okay? They assume that he is right, that he's always correct, and they have what they call faith. They don't, be they don't believe uh, that anyone can doubt their God and they don't ask questions ever. They just believe blindly without any proof. Okay. Now, this is very wrong. So what I'm saying is a God can neither confirm nor deny. Now, what can a God neither confirm nor deny? Well, there's many, many things that a God can neither confirm nor deny. But one of them would be the God's own existence. Uh, we can't prove that a God exists or not unless we experience that God directly. The proof is in the experience, all right? And none of us can claim to have that experience except people who claim that they've been to heaven. So uh, other than the people who claim they've been to heaven and have seen, none of us can confirm or deny the existence of a God. And in fact, the Christian God they've been relying on their faith, their faith, which is basically a, a denial, a denial of healthy skepticism for thousands of years. And I would like this to come to an end because uh, we should, we should have, have evidence and we should seek proof for, uh, for what is real. Now, does that mean that a God doesn't exist? No, it doesn't. But it does mean that we can't confirm nor deny the existence of a God or a goddess without a direct experience. Now, I've heard God's voice before, and so I know I have direct experience. I know there's a goddess, okay? But goddess herself can neither confirm nor deny anything. Even goddess doesn't have this power. She can neither confirm nor deny existence. She cannot. She can neither confirm nor deny for us anything we see in existence or the truth of anything in existence. All she can do is show us experience and let us draw our own conclusions. Now, what is the reason for this? Why doesn't a, a goddess or a god have the power to confirm nor deny anything. Well, one reason is that we have free will. Another reason is that we have skeptical minds. We are natural skeptics. And we have the ability to decide for ourselves whether something is true or not. We do have this ability. Christians deny this ability to everyone, to nearly everyone. But it's one of Goddess's most precious gifts to us, is our skepticism. So we should be skeptical, and, and she can neither confirm nor deny anything in existence for us. So we have the right to be skeptical and to rely on our own experience for whatever we choose to experience and to believe what, what uh, we want to believe and... Uh, to choose what not to believe. That's our choice. We have the free will choice and we have the skeptical mind. So we have minds and we can decide for ourselves what's true and what isn't. 
So, uh, so um, uh, it's true that a God can neither confirm nor deny, and neither can you. And I'll get to that part next. Now, what is an example of neither can you? Why is it that we ourselves, we humans, can neither confirm nor deny anything in existence? Well, because, first of all, we didn't create everything in existence. There are some things that we, that we participated in the creation of, but we didn't create anything of ourselves. So a uh, goddess created everything, so she would be the only one to confirm nor deny, and she can't confirm nor deny for us either. So that means that we can't confirm or deny either. And in fact, people who claim to have the absolute truth and claim that they're enlightened and then they know all the facts, uh, don't, don't follow them because you have a right to your healthy skepticism. You have a right to disbelieve if you choose whatever a uh, uh, guru says to you. Um, just keep, it, keep your mind open and don't allow yourself to be prejudiced by a guru or any other spiritual leader that claims to have the absolute truth because they don't. No one has the absolute truth. No one can confirm nor deny for you. You have to have a direct experience yourself and then you can decide based on your experience and whether you find your experience is valid or not, whether there's any validity or not to your experiences, whether or not something is true. Now, our experience tells us that there's something out there in the universe because we have stars and we have star stuff on our planet. We have plenty of evidence that there's a universe. Uh, we just don't have any proof about the creator of the universe or if there was a creator or if it just emerged out of space all of a sudden. So that's, that's the key thing to remember we cannot confirm nor deny anything for others. So we shouldn't try to confirm or deny anything for others because it's based on our own experiences. So that's it. Uh, goddess can neither confirm nor deny. Any God that you can imagine that might exist out there can neither confirm nor deny for you. And neither can any humans, neither can you, neither can I. Uh, none of us can confirm nor deny because we all have our healthy skeptical minds and our free will choice to decide what's right for us and what isn't. I'm Sarah Jane Alpha Wolf signing off. Uh, have a terrific week. And, uh, you know, the Festival of the Maiden is right around the corner. So uh, soon we'll be celebrating the Festival of the Maiden, and I'd like you all to participate in, in that with me.